Hello and welcome to another Garmin Marine webinar brought to you by the Garmin Marine team. Today we'll be looking at Garmin terminology. What does it all mean? As always, if you have any questions, please reach out to marine.training at garmin.com. We'll try to answer your questions in a timely manner. So I know there's a lot of new boaters. There's a lot of first time boaters as well as a lot of boaters that are new to Garmin. Hopefully this webinar will help clear up some of that terminology, some of that Garmin terminology, as well as some of that marine electronics terminology that's out there. So let's get going. <clears throat> so let's take a look at GPS. So GPS versus chart plotter, a lot of confusion out there. A lot of people think this means the same thing. So let's look at GPS. GPS stands for Global Positioning System. Uh, basically, your GPS is made up of 24 satellites that circle the Earth twice a day. A GPS provides your location, but it doesn't necessarily show it on a map. Where a chart plotter takes that same information that you're gathering from that G those GPS satellites and places your position on a chart. So I kind of explain it like this. Your watch has a GPS in it. Your phone has a GPS in it. They do not have chart plotters in them, okay? So let's take a look at the Striker series. <clears throat> the Striker series, they have a GPS built in. You can mark up to 5,000 waypoints. You can show those waypoints on the screen, but it's a blank screen. Where our Echo Maps, Echo Map Ultras, and our GPS Map series have a map or a chart preloaded, or a supplemental map has been added where it's going to show your position over that on that chart. So remember, Although the strikers have a GPS built into them, they are not a chart plotter, okay? So let's take a look at WAS. WAS stands for Wide Area Augmentation System. And basically WAS is a group of uh, 25 ground reference stations. They have two master stations, one on the East Coast and one on the West Coast. And basically what WAS does, because these stations have been surveyed and we know exactly where those ground stations are, it takes that information coming from the GPS satellites through the land-based land -based stations, and it corrects any offsets that are in the GPS. So once you turn WAS on your receiver, you're going to have better than three meters accuracy 90% of the time. So remember, WAS only works in the U.S. So WAS is actually turned off on all of our units. So once you have your unit on the boat, you turned on, you have it set up, I highly recommend going to Home Setting System GPS and turning WAS on. This will help improve your GPS accuracy. So our units can also track the GLONASS, which is the Russian satellite system, as well as the Galileo, which is the European satellite system. These are again turned off from the factory. You can go to Home Setting System GPS and turn them on. You may or may not ever need to turn these on. If you're in an open body of water, fishing in the ocean or a big lake, and you have a good view of the sky, um, I would recommend not turning them on. But if you're in an area where you have a tree canopy over your head or a mountain range around you, and you can't really see the sky, uh, remember, your unit needs to lock on the four GPS satellites to get a fixed position. So you need four green bars. If you have are having trouble connecting to satellites, definitely turn GLONASS and Galileo on. And that'll just give you more satellites up there to, to acquire. Let's take a quick look at the term five hertz and 10 hertz. This, this is actually referring to the update or refresh rate of the GPS receiver. So all of our Echo Map units update five times a second, and all our Echo Map Ultra and GPS Map Series units update 10 times a second. Okay, for for most recreational anglers out there, you really won't be able to tell the difference. Um, but the 10 hertz update rate uh, gives more precise positioning and allows the device to perform better at higher speeds. So let's look at connections. So NEMA 2000, we've all heard the term NEMA 2000. NEMA 2000 is, is a set of marine electronic standards and the way Garmin shares data between units. This also is how the MFDs communicates with devices such as autopilots, fuel sensors, VHF radios, as well as many other products. This is also how the MFD communicates and receives engine data. And I get this question asked to me a lot. Can your unit read my engine data? 
And the answer is yes. There are additional components required, and is, they are not provided by Garmin. So I would check with your engine manufacturer or your dealer and ask them for the component uh, that you need to connect to the motor to get NEMA information up to the Garmin chart plotter. So let's take a look while we're on the screen at the backbone. The backbone is made up of a series of T's, and the T's are connected to each device that you want to add into your NEMA 2000 list. So here we've got our SAT compass, our GPS 24XD uh, GPS antenna, GMI 20, autopilot, VHF radio, G Wind, and our engine, all hooked up via a drop cable to a T, and the group of T's make up the backbone. We also have a drop cable going from our MFD to a T into our backbone. If we have multiple units, each unit is going to require a drop cable and a T and will need to be added into the backbone. Remember, NEMA 2000 is how our units share data. So Garmin Network or Ethernet. So the Ethernet network is, is what Garmin uses to share picture and some data. So the picture we share between units would be radar, sonar, mapping. Uh, data would be the, our waypoints, routes, and tracks. So our units, the GPS map series, have between one and four network ports on the back. Uh, the GPS map 86, 17s, 22, and 24s will have four network ports on the back. This is where we plug our radar domes in, live scope, our GXM54 weather antenna, our uh, series of cameras, or FLIR thermal imaging cameras, which aren't Garmin. This is also how we would connect units together. So if you have multiple units on your boat, you would have to have a drop cable, and the drop cable would connect one unit to the other. Sometimes, because again, our units have between one and four, you may have a chart plotter on your boat that has one or two network ports on it. And if you've added all these or you want all these great features, you're, you're, you, would have, you, would be, you would run out of network ports. So you would need to add the GMS-10 port expander. So the network cable would plug into one port into the back of one of the chart plotters, and then all your other accessories, once you fill up the network ports on the back of the unit, would then plug into the port expander. Let's talk about the PoE. The PoE stands for Power Over Ethernet. It's an isolation coupler. So if you're using a FLIR thermal imaging camera, which is not Garmin, underwater lights, or a stabilization system, you will need to add the PoE to the Ethernet cable. Uh, this will just protect that uh, Ethernet port. J1939. I would say probably 70, 80% of the recreational anglers out there uh, will, will never need to use the J1939 port. The port is on the back of the unit, and it's really designed to, to bring in data from diesel motors and generators. So if you have a diesel motor or a generator on your boat and you want to get some of that uh, information up on the chart plotter, uh, it would plug in through J1939. Let's take a look at navigation. So waypoints. Waypoints are locations that are recorded and stored in your Garmin MFD. Waypoints can be manually entered by taking coordinates from a map, or they can be entered by marking a point at a current position of the device or on the map of the device. So the most common ways to, to put waypoints in your boats. If you have coordinates, you can add them into your chart plotter. Uh, by just hitting the mark button and then go into the waypoint list and go to change uh, and you can change the latitude and longitude. If you hit the mark button, the mark button is going to mark exactly where the boat is. Okay, so if I hit the mark button, um, it's going to drop a waypoint and maybe it's in my waypoint number four. I can go in and change that later or I can go in and change and put new coordinates in if I want to add coordinates. But if I want to mark a boat ramp or mark if I'm fishing, and I run over some structure, I can hit the mark key and it'll store exactly where I am, exactly where that chart plotter is. The other way is to go to our map page. When you're on your map page, you can see our vessels right here. Maybe I want to mark this location right here. So I can tap the screen. Once I see the crosshairs on the screen, I can connect 
or I can uh, hit waypoint. And now I can drop a waypoint at that location. So here I've dropped number five and I've stored it in my waypoint list as number five. And I can go back and edit that position later. Tracks. Tracks are like breadcrumb trails, allowing you to see where you have traveled in the past. This allows you to navigate a path previously taken. Tracks are best suited when it's, when it's necessary to travel on a very specific path to reach the desired destination. Here, you can see the vessels here, and we've laid down a track line. And I use tracks all the time, especially when I'm going and exploring new areas. Um, I like that breadcrumb trail. So if I get into an area and I can't remember how to get back, I can follow that track line back. This is also very helpful if you run into bad weather or fog and you may need to turn around or you may need to get back to that, that home area, you can follow your track line back. Let's look at routes. Routes are predefined paths. They're created from a group of locations, points entered into the GPS receiver in the sequence you desire to navigate them. So you can see our vessels in the screen on the screen right here. We've tapped the screen and added one turn, two turns, three turns, and our end, end destination. So the problem here is we don't know the water depth, okay? So if we travel this path, we, we need to keep track of our water depth to make sure we don't run aground. So Again, routes are best suited for reaching a specific destination or a set of destinations when the path being taken is not important. I usually only use routes when I'm in open water. Auto guidance. Auto guidance quickly calculates path to destinations and provides ETA while underway. This feature is built into all Echomap Ultras and GPS map series units. So, once you turn your unit on, you can go in and set up some parameters. So you need to put in your minimum water depth that your boat needs and your maximum height. So you need to take an account if your boat has a T-top, if that T-top has antennas on top, if you're on a sailboat, uh, how tall that stick is. Then once you have those parameters set into your unit, <clears throat> you can tap anywhere on the screen. Hit auto guidance. And based on those preset parameters you've entered into the boat, the unit's gonna give you the safest route to get to that destination. And that's called auto guidance. Really nice feature. Man overboard. The man overboard function is a common feature for marine GPS units. When the man overboard function is pressed, the GPS automatically marks a waypoint at the current location and it allows you to enable the go-to feature on the boat to get back to that destination. So if someone goes over the boat or something falls out of the boat and you need to quickly get back to that destination or that waypoint, you can go SOS, man overboard, and then navigate to man overboard, yes. If you have an autopilot, you may get a prompt that says, do you want wish to engage the autopilot and connect and hit yes. And this will take you back to that destination or back to that waypoint uh, where whatever went overboard. Let's look at a few apps. So the Active Captain app. This is a free all-in-one Active Captain app, allows you users to manage their marine experience from nearly anywhere. So <clears throat> once downloaded to com compatible smartphone or tablet, you will have a few features. Some of them are software updates. So this is an easy, quick way for you to update the MFDs on your boat. And I highly recommend you doing this. Uh, update or user data, data sync. So this is the ability to pull out all your waypoints uh, out of your chart plotter for security reasons. You can also create waypoints maybe at home and upload them once you get back to the boat. A uh, quick draw community, and we'll talk about quick draw community in a minute. But quick draw community gives you the ability to go into the community and pull out quick draw data and download it free to your uh, MFD. Uh, you also have the ability to purchase new charts. So maybe you have a unit that has only freshwater charts in it, and you want to take your boat to the intercoastal or offshore. You can buy purchase charts and download them here. Also, smart notifications. So hooked up to a compatible chart plotter, you can get all your text messaging on the screen. 
One of my favorite features is the Garmin Helm. This is a portion of the Active Captain app that lets you turn your smartphone or tablet into a second station. So once connected to the chart plotter via the uh, Wi-Fi in the chart plotter, uh, you basically have a second station. So you can see everything that you see on your chart plotter, you will see on your phone or tablet. You can mark waypoints, create routes, uh, change screens. Pretty nice feature. The Fusion Link. So this is a free app that you download to your uh, smartphone. And once that's on your smartphone, you can play, pause, and skip music from your phone. You have over-the-air software updates, uh, volume control, source selection, and DSP profile setup. So if you're running our uh, Fusion amps and speakers, you can go in there and set the DSP profiles up. Navionics. This is the only app which is a subscription is required. Once the Navionics app is downloaded to a compatible smartphone or tablet, you will have all the nautical charts provided by Navionics, which include relief shading. You'll get dock to dock auto routing, routing similar to Garmin's auto guidance, <clears throat> and you and a new feature called connections. And this is a really cool feature. If you have all your friends out on the water and they all have the Navionics app, uh, you can actually see where they are. Uh, if you have this turned on, you can see where they are on the water so you can all meet up. Pretty nice feature. Mapping. So let's talk preloaded versus built-in charts. So preloaded built-in charts is a chart that is built into the chart plotter's memory. Echo maps either have a worldwide base map or Lakeview G3 or Blue Chart G3 built in. Echo Map Ultras and GPS Map Series MFDs have either worldwide base map or a combination of Lakeview G3 and Blue Chart G3 built in. So what is the worldwide base map? Worldwide base map shows water and land, but no bathymetric or navigation features, no contours. Blue Chart G3, it's really designed for the coastal offshore boater. This will show your contours and navigation features. Lakeview G3 is built for the inland market. This will show inland lakes. It also has contours and navigation features. So let's look at some of our chart plotters and the MFDs. So echo maps. I'm going to use an example, the seven inch echo map. So echo maps come in four versions. If your echo map, let's say you have a 73 you will have U.S. Inland Lakeview G3 built in. If you have a 74, the 4 stands for U.S. Coastal Blue Chart G3 built in. If you have a 75, you will have Canadian Lakeview, so Canada Waters built in. And if your unit has a 72, or it is a 72, you will have a worldwide base map, no contours, and you will have to buy a supplemental map to add to get that contours. So stepping up to the Echo Map Ultras, if uh, you have a 106 or 126, that will come preloaded with Blue Chart G3 and Lakeview G3 charts. The 102 and 122 will only have worldwide base maps. Looking at the GPS map series, if you have a 8400 series on your boat or a 7X2 series or a 12X2 series, you will only have worldwide base map where if you have the 8600 and the X3 series, you will have the combination blue chart G3 and Lakeview G3 charts. So let's talk about blue chart G3. We spoke earlier about this is what's preloaded in some, uh, in some of our chart plotters. This is, can also be purchased uh, and, via a supplemental map. So if, if you are a customer has in a, a unit that has in Lake, mapping in it only and you want to take your boat to the coast, you can add Blue Chart G3, which will give you auto guidance, depth range shading, which we'll talk about a little later, uh, up to one foot contours, shallow water shading, and nav aids. Likewise, if you're a coastal angler and you want to go fish some freshwater lakes, you can purchase the Lakeview G3. Uh, the Lakeview G3 uh, supplemental map will have auto guidance depth range shading, up to one foot contours, and shallow water shading. This covers over 17,000 lakes um, with up to one foot contours in the U.S. Lakeview Ultra East and Lakeview Ultra West. These are two additional supplemental maps that you can add to your unit. These are really designed for the freshwater market. 
Along with all these features, you're going to get dynamic lake levels as well as surface and side scan photography. So dynamic lake levels, if you're fishing on a lake that is uh, fluctuates via a dam, maybe that dam has let out water and that lake's down, you know, 50, 60 feet. You can actually go into your chart plotter and put those new levels in, those new depths in, and your contours will adjust or your depth levels will adjust. Surface and side scan photography. So when our survey boats scan these lakes, um, sometimes they came across, you know, sunken, uh, features like logs or boats or anything that that was below the boat when they went over it they took a picture so you'll have an icon on your chart that you can click on and it'll show you exact that exact picture that they took so you'll know exactly what you're seeing on the bottom vision card we talked about this earlier this is a supplemental map and it can be added to the units uh, this will give you up to one foot contours depth rain shading again i'll talk about that in a minute uh, high resolution satellite imaging, uh, as well as auto guidance technology. So if you do have a unit that doesn't have auto guidance built in, you can add a vision card and you'll get auto guidance. Relief shading. This is something new. It's pretty popular out there. <clears throat> so if you would like relief shading, you would need to add the vision card. And relief shading combines the colors and shadows to give you an easy to interpret clear view of bottom structure quick draw contours so quick draw contours uses your transducer and chart plotter to create free instant one foot depth contour lines overlaid on your nav or fishing charts so you're building your own mapping with quick draw i have my quick draw turned on all the time i'm constantly building new mapping because where i live the bot every storm that comes through the bottom structure changes so to access that you can go to nav charts or fishing charts select menu quick draw contours start recording now once you select start recording if you have a echo map product or a gps map product you will need to add an SD card. So this message will pop up if you do not have an SD card inserted into your chart plotter. I would recommend no larger than a 32 gig card. So we also talked about the Striker series having no maps, but the Strikers do have the capability of drawing quick draw. They have internal memory and they can hold up to 2 million acres of quick draw data. And that's equal to about 2 million football fields. So although the, the Striker series, as I spoke about earlier, they are a GPS only, you can turn quick draw on and draw your own maps. So once you hit start recording, this screen will pop up and you can see um, the boats in the screen right here. We've got a green circle around it. That means our quick draw is recording. We can see that we are recording one foot contours here. This is called mowing the grass. I usually go back and forth if I have time and I fill in the area. Um, if this circle turns red, that means you're going too, uh, way too, too fast and you need to slow down till the circle turns green so it can return your quick draw contours. Depth range shading. So I know I spoke about this earlier. So depth range shading is a feature that allows you to shade in certain depths. So maybe you're fishing an area where let's say just crappie. Crappie are biting between 10 and 15 feet. So you want to shade in that leg just where there's 10 to 15 feet because that's where on this day that crappie seem to be hanging out. So you can go to your fishing charts, menu, layers, chart, depth, depth shading. Now there's a few steps to get here, but it's well worth it. So you can see here, um, I have put in a few depth shadings. I've got zero to five in red, five to 10 in orange, 10 to 15 in yellow, and 15 to 20 in green. I can also add a new depth range if I want to. But once I have my depth range in there, I can go back to my charts. You could see all my depth range, all my topography has been shaded in. So if I'm if if I know those crappie are in 10 to 15 feet of water and I have that shaded in in orange, I would want to only fish the orange area. 
I wouldn't want to fish anything red, yellow, or green. And that's depth rain shading, a great feature. Let's talk about sonar, and I'll try to get through all this terminology pretty quickly. 2D, let's talk about 2D traditional sonar. This picture or this image is what 2D traditional sonar looks like. It's normally uh, 2D traditional. Normally, uh, these transducers emit two sonar cones, typically a 50 degree, a 50 frequency, and either a 77 or 200. Okay, that's 2D traditional sonar. When we're talking about chirp 2D traditional sonar, again, you're getting the same image back, but CHIRP stands for Compressed High Intensity Radiated Pulse. This sonar emits a continuous sweep of frequencies. So depending whether you have a high CHIRP, medium CHIRP, or low CHIRP, you're putting anywhere between 40 and 100 frequencies in the water every second. So you're going to get better returns, better image, uh, and better target separation. So a much better picture on with using a chirp transducer 2D traditional sonar versus just a regular 2D traditional sonar. So let's talk about Clearview. Clear, Clearview is actually the term Garmin uses that brings together our side view and down view uh, scanning capabilities. So this is made up of down view and down view sonar uses high frequency signals. It pulses like a broad fan. And I kind of I kind of explain it like a page in a book. Each page is a pulse that goes out in down view. And as those pages come back, it makes a great picture of what you're seeing on the bottom. Where side view uses those higher frequencies between 400 and 1000 to fan out almost 180 degrees. So you could see up to 200 feet on either side of the boat. This is a great way to find targets and structure that you may not ever see with 2D traditional or down view. UHD, UHD stands for ultra high definition. And this is usually associated with our transducers such as a GT54 and GT56. So this is going to give you that great image quality. Uh, UHD provides the highest image quality that we offer. Sonar A-scope. I always like to talk about Sonar A-scope. Sonar A-scope is a vertical flasher along the right side of the sonar screen in 2D sonar. So to access that, you could go to your traditional sonar, select Sonar Setup, Appearance, A-scope. So what you see is this box will appear on the right side of your screen. So what this is showing you is what's directly up under the transducer, the center line of that transducer. So if you're looking, if you're fishing on the bottom uh, and uh, for like grouper and snapper, where it's very important you be over that structure, when you see that structure ping in this box, it'll only be in this box uh, just a couple of seconds, you are directly on top of that structure. If you see, once you see that structure on the screen right here, you've already gone through it. It's already exited your sonar cone. So uh, a scope is very important. The other nice thing I like about a scope, it gives it provides this number right here, 84. What's that? What that's telling me is in 380 feet of water, I'm looking at an 84 foot span across the bottom. That's that's a pretty big span. So that's why a scope is so important. That tells me I'm directly on top of that target. So we have a lot of great webinars we've already recorded, and we have one called Deep Dive into Settings, and this takes an account, that's, this actually goes over our traditional sonar and our sonar setup. So please go to our Garmin YouTube page and look up Deep Dive into Settings. GSD Black Box Sonar. So some of our units do not have sonars built in. Our 8600, uh, 8617s, 22 and 24s do not have a sonar in them. If you buy one of our GPS map series that are, is not an XSV, it will not have a sonar modular built in. XSV means the unit has sonar built in. So you will need to add a GSD or a black box. So we have a few available. The GSD 24, this is a traditional 5200. Uh, kilohertz box, so it only shoots out two frequencies. This is a great box for sailors or uh, cruisers. 
If you're a little more serious fisherman, you would want to step up to the GSD-25. The GSD-25 is very similar to what comes into the GPS map series 8600 XSV model units. Uh, it's a true dual channel, one kilowatt chirp, side view, and uh, clear view uh, box. Uh, you serious anglers who are looking to, you know, reach deep, deep water would want to go with our GSD-26. Remember, our GSD-26 is only traditional sonar only, so it has no side view and down view. But the GSD-26 GSD is 3,000 watt box, so it can get down, you know, over 1,000 feet very easily. Um, the GCV-20, this is our ultra high def box. Again, this box only does high def for side view and down view. So there is no 2D traditional built into this box. So you will have to add a 2D transducer. So the transducers that work with the GCV-20 are the GT-30, 34, and 36 only. So panoptics. Panoptics is our original phased array transducers. And um, the panoptics use one frequency, 417, but it provides a great live view of what's on the bottom and a 3D view of what's on the bottom or a forward view live and 3D. So again, this is our original panoptics. Uh, all the technology is built into the transducer and that will plug into the network port on the back of the unit. You will not need a black box. Live scope, which I'm sure most of you have heard about, that is our live scanning sonar, which has a higher resolution and a higher frequency. So instead of like of the original panoptics using 417 kilohertz, this uses 530 through 1100. So this is shooting all these frequencies out at one time, which gives you that almost ultrasound picture of what's below the boat and what's in front of the boat. So LiveScope is a transducer and black box. And that black box plugs into the network port. So LiveScope also has a AHAR system built in, which helps stabilizes the image on the screen in rough water conditions. Let's take a quick look at transducers and transducer terminology. So transom mount, again, transom mount, transducers mount on the transom of the boat. Pretty easy, right? Well, the key is placement. So a transducer needs good, clean water going over the bottom of that transducer to read. So at high speeds, if you have any bubbles, any any anything coming from the prop, any trash going over the bottom of that transducer face, the transducer will not read. So in mounting the trans transom mount transducer on the back of the boat, please take an account, uh, you know, don't put the transducer too close to the prop or a chine on the boat. That can cause uh, disturbance and the transducer will not read. So uh, let's look at tilted element. This is a through hole and you have a basically a through hole with the element which is tilted to different degrees built into the through hall. So they come in a zero degrees, 12 degrees and 20 degree tilt. So based on the dead rise of your boat, we'll determine which, uh, which tilted version of the transducer you'll need. Uh, so if your dead rise on your boat is zero to seven degrees, you can get away with the zero degrees, eight to 15 degrees, you would need the 12 degree tilted element and anything between 16 and 24 degrees, you would need to go with the 20 degree tilted element. This is very popular on center console boats uh, 35 foot and under. Uh, over 35 foot, I would probably recommend going with a traditional through haul. And again, this comes with a fairing block. Uh, this does hang below the boat, but some larger boats, boats over 35 feet, sometimes they need this fairing block to get this transducer in the water. So you have good clean water going over this transducer so you can get a good read. A lot of times the tilted element units, like what I showed before, they're too close to the boats, the to the hull, larger boats, and you get dirty water going over those transducers and they won't read. Uh, in-hole mounts. So some boats where you can't 
put a through hole in. Uh, bass boats, there's one one thing, one boat I can think of that a lot of people use in holes. Uh, this is a transducer that actually glues in the hull of the boat and shoots through the hull. So you can either epoxy uh, the the transducer like the GT8 in the hull, or with like the GT15, or you would need to uh, glue the trim ring down and then you fill the box up with either mineral oil or a pet safe antifreeze and then that will help the transducer read through the hull. Uh, remember one thing when you do go with a through hull um, you lose some of the depth range so uh, it is a little weaker because it does have the have to shoot through the structure but through holes are very nice or in holes are very nice uh boats traveling at high speeds where transom mounts won't work um also pocket mount transducers and usually this is used on larger boats uh po pocket mount transducers uh provide less drag and there's no fairing block needed and usually these are molded into the boat hull dual chirp so dual chirp means that the unit is capable of reading two chirping transducers. For example, our GPS map series units are dual chirp capable. So they have an orange eight uh, orange 12 pin port and a blue eight pin port. So with this adapter cable, you can plug um, a 12 pin uh, medium chirp into the orange port and a eight pin a low frequency transducer into the blue port. Now we're running dual chirp. So now I'm pulsing all those frequency, frequencies we talked about earlier uh, in that, that are in the medium range chirp and the low band chirp. Uh, same thing with our um, GSD25. Uh, we can plug the medium chirp into one and the low chirp into one, and now we have dual chirp. If you have these transducers plugged into one chart plotter, you could do a split screen and view both uh, transducers on one screen. Let's take a quick look at radars. So the Phantom radar, the Phantom solid state pulse compression radar series comes with motion scope and Doppler technology. So these units have no magnetron. So the uh, there's no power draw or a very low power draw and and no long warm-up time so the dome phantoms are excellent choices for sailboaters i would highly recommend the phantom radar for any first time uh, uh boaters if you're looking to add radar to the boat definitely look at the phantom radars because of the motion scope and doppler technology so the motion scope um, and echo trails are only available on the Phantom radars. And let's take a look at Motion Scope. Motion Scope um, uses Doppler radar technology to detect and highlight moving targets to help you avoid collision. So you can see on the screen, boats coming towards you are in red, boats go going away from you are in green. So you can see as this boat is coming towards us, it's red on the screen. As soon as that boat gets in front of us, it turns green. So it now we know it's moving away from, from us. This is great for that first time uh, boat owner. You know, if you're traveling up the intercoastal and you have four red targets, uh, you can see, hey, I've got those red targets, they're coming towards me. Let's look at echo trails. Echo trails, once turned on, leaves a trail behind the boat so we can see which way those boats are moving. So here I've got a boat coming towards us with echo trails on, a boat going away from us with echo trails on, and a boat way out, maybe jet ski out here to the side moving pretty fast, and it has echo trails turned on. Radar overlay. Radar overlay overlays are the radar image onto your chart plotter map page. Um, and this is available on all of our radars or in all of our radars. And again, you can see the boats in the middle of the screen. We've got our map page and then we have our radar overlaid on top of it. So we can see here's land. We can see the return reflection from the radar. Here's the uh, boat in the middle of the screen going down the intercoastal. And we have the return of both sides of the inter intercoastal on the screen. 
I highly recommend if you're a first time radar owner, anchor your boat in a, in, in a, in a wide body of water and just watch boats and birds and things like that moving around you. Uh, so you'll get a better uh, firsthand look and you'll know what you're looking for when you're, when you're out there looking at your radar. Oh, MARPA. MARPA stands for Mini Automatic Radar Plotter Aid. So basically what MARPA does is give you the ability to track targets on the boat. So from your radar page, you can touch and hold, uh, oops, sorry. Uh, you can touch and hold a target on the screen. And then you can go and hit acquire target from the top menu bar. So I use this when I'm traveling with a group of people, maybe going over to the Bahamas. I've got five or six boats with me. I will MARPA each one so we can all stay together. I can follow them. Uh, this is also very good if you're on a new body of water or a big body of water and you've got a lot of, a lot of traffic around you. Uh, or at night, maybe you're at anchor and there's some boats around and you want to kind of keep track of those boats. You can acquire those boats through MARPA and track those boats. Auto bird game. So this is a feature in all of our chart plotters. And a lot of people want to know, hey, how do I find birds? Well, in our in our radars, uh, you can go into auto uh, bird game. And what this does is basically pushes the gain very high. It's kind of hard to read, and this is why I definitely recommend anchor the boat. Take some time to, to watch birds out in front of you so you know what you're looking for. So people are looking for birds because birds are usually diving on fish, bait fish, and the bait fish, well, there's larger fish up under them feeding on, on the bait fish. So birds on the screen is going to look something like this, and they're going to actually go in and out. So as these birds dive in the water, these pictures will go away. So this these images will kind of flash on and off, on and off. And that's what you need to look for when you're looking for birds, okay? But all of our units have auto bird gain, but I'd highly recommend taking some time to learn learning how to work it and, and especially how to read it. So let's look at a few other features on the units and terminology. So one helm. A uh, one helm brings together all the operations and capabilities provided by our industry partners into one simple, convenient control center. So basically one helm, we have a series of partners out there and let's just say LumaShore. So LumaShore will make a component that plugs into the back of our chart plotter, our GPS map series. And then we can control all the LumaShore lighting we have on the boat via our chart plotter. So um, you can go to Garmin.com for a full list of all of our One Helm partners. AIS, AIS stands for Automatic Identification System. And basically what the AIS does is transmit your vessel information to other AIS systems out there and their information to you. So this is very good if you're in a heavy congested area of boats, uh, especially large container ships, they're required to have AI, AI systems so you can see them and they can see you. DSC, Digital Select Calling. So all VHF radios, I believe after 2005, are required to have DSC, Digital Select Calling. And you do need to go and register your VHS and you will be issued a MMSI number. So once you have this MMS9 number and your VHF radio is connected through uh, or into the chart plotter, you can select if you get in trouble this little this DSI this DSC button here, and it will actually broadcast to all VHF radios that have DSC, and, and an alarm will go off. And you have to actually physically go to that VHF radio and touch any button to stop the alarm. If your VHF radio is hooked up to your chart plotter, it'll broadcast your boat information and your GPS pos positioning, uh, your coordinates. And the Coast Guard does monitor this. If your VHF radio is not hooked up to your GPS, it'll still uh, send a signal out, but you will have to broadcast your position. Okay, so great tool. A lot of us don't take advantage of this. 
One other nice feature about the DSE, if you have multiple friends that have DSE radios, uh, you can get their MMSI number and you can actually call them. So it's like a phone. You can plug in their MMSI number. And you can actually call that, you know, your, your, your other fishing partner out there and see what they're doing. So last but not least, I want to talk about our Garmin Marine webinars. Uh, we have a Garmin YouTube channel. We've already, like I said before, uh, pre-recorded several webinars. So we have uh, advanced sonar uh, set up, as I spoke about, uh, choosing the right radar, choosing the right uh, transducer. So a lot of great webinars out there. Please go to our Garmin YouTube channel if you would like to view them. Also, we have a Garmin podcast called Behind, Behind the Chart Potter, where we interview some uh, pretty famous people out there. We've interviewed Bill Dance, uh, Hank Cherry, two-time uh, Bassmasters Classic winner, and several others. So if you'd like to listen to it, it's called Behind the Chart Plotter, and it's available in iTunes um, and a lot of different uh, platforms out there. Again, from the Garmin Marine team, I want to thank you for taking the time um, with me today. Uh, please, if you have any questions, reach out to marine.training at garmin.com, and I hope to see you out on the water.